Uh, it's, it's true. Those are, those are exactly the words of, of Reed when we think about, uh, about launching a product. So uh, I encourage you, those of you that haven't tried the app to download it now. Uh, those that have, you get to, well, let's try it out. Let's see how it goes. I've seen it. It's no better proof point than trying this uh, on stage with real people and live. Uh, and Pete Warren's not here to see if it's tracking our GPS, so it's OK. Uh, there we go. I see a lot of people posting. And there you are. So you should be able to see me and see what's, what it looks like from up here. So Brady proposed this topic of uh, power of proximity. And I thought it was a great title. And with it is what I thought was really interesting, especially getting uh, educated by Brady on what is where, where is where going, and the history of it. One of the things I thought is really useful to talk about is the progression of where, how things progressed. Well, let's go back to the very beginning of, of where, and you find this guy that looks like that. Brady's sitting there, and uh, he's there at the, at the color offices. So it starts with Brady. Uh, like all good things do, and, but it moves on maps. We start dealing really with maps, putting information down, laying it out. Now, obviously, this isn't done. There's a tremendous amount to go from this, but you're able to actually show a map. You're able to actually see what your area looks like in real time, and, or, or at least a projection of it. It doesn't stop there. It then moves into location. Now you can get directions. You can get information about what the what places are nearby, how long it's going to take you. And then it progresses again. And we've seen this progression into this world of social. You've seen things that Facebook is done. Srinivas was talking about that yesterday. Dennis talking about what Foursquare is doing, Guala, Yelp, Twitter, Google. Everyone's doing all these things. But let's take a second and literally think about what that, where is that going, right? So, Convention center, here we are. Great, I can get pictures. I just type it in. I can see pictures of where, what's going, what it looks like, especially if it's sunny outside. I can check out reviews. But what am I checking reviews out for? Am I checking out reviews for the convention center, the hotel next to the convention center, the bar out there, the pool, this talk, this conference? What are we reviewing? What is the context around that? I can also look at who's checked in. I can see, but once again, what are they checking into? There's that, there's a lot of taxonomy around those things. And you can even look at all your friends and all the, the, the aspects that Facebook brings to this. And so one of the things that you think about as we get to this is really what are we trying to get at? Is it what's nearby? What events are taking place? Who's here? What, what has taken place? We're looking at historical context. And you realize that we're all trying to get at the same thing. And that same thing is context. We're trying to put context around a place, an event, a time. And think about the first time you come to the conference, first time you walk into some place. What's the first thing you do when you get to a conference, an event, a barbecue, any place you're there? First thing you do, do I see anybody? No. Right? And there's lots of, well, I hope someone's OK back there. <laughs> I knocked him over with that statement. <laughs> do I see anyone I know? And you do that classic thing of, do you skirt around the edge of the party? Do you cut through the middle of the group? What's your tactic to find someone you know? Great, that failed. You don't see anybody you know. Are there people that I might be familiar with? Oh, I think I saw that person at the last WEAR conference. Maybe I can go talk to them. And finally, if that fails, what do you do? You start looking at name badges. Oh, you're from you know, that company. OK, I have familiar interests. Now we can strike up a conversation. And so what's going on in that process? What's really trying to happen inside our head? We're working hard to get comfortable with location and understanding those who are around us. And to me, the really cool part of this is our brain is using social network analysis along with those in close proximity to develop this new level of familiarity. And think about that for a second. You have all these people out here. You can see all this visual information. And then you have this projection of what this social network looks like. And you're overlaying, you're melding those two ideas 
to get a sense of how familiar are you with that situation. And that familiarity, that changes your level of trust in the way you interact with the space. And so if we put those three, those, those aspects I've talked about together, what you get is proximity, context via social network analysis, location, and trust and familiarity. And my, if you put that together, what my thesis is, is that proximity adds context to a location and then changes the level of trust and familiarity. So where does that go? Well, for those of you that are kids, or remember back when you were kids, you have that situation of, yes, you're, you're clinging to your parent. You're not really willing to let go. But by the end of the experience at that party, you're, no one wants to leave. Everyone's happy. They're having a great time. They've changed that, that experience. They've gone from one paradigm to another. They're comfortable. They're now interacting in a different way. And really what you're trying to do is, as more people share those experiences, they should become more, more comfortable. And it's that kind of classic feeling. It's those that remember Cheers, that you walk into the bar, everyone says, Norm, right? You, you feel that level of comfort. As soon as you walk in and people give you that handshake, that verbal, that body language, that acceptance, all of a sudden you have a new way of, of feeling comfortable in that space, and it changes the way you interact. So how do we use technology to help facilitate that? And for us, what should happen is we should enable everyone to share experiences through each other's eyes. And you can do that. You take a picture of the app, and that's really where we come in, is you take a picture of this, and you get to see all the different perspectives of what it's like. I'll take this side now. And you should be able to see what it looks like, or you'll know what my next slide is. <laughs> uh, so you can really suddenly get a sense of what's going on in different places. And why is that important? What we're trying to do is help you share your story in real time. And if you share your story in real time, you should sh start to be able to change this paradigm. And so to give you some examples here, just so I'd walk you through some examples of, of the way people are using the app. It's going to be a little hard, so I'll try to do this, come out a little forward here. And this is a wedding. There's three contributors to this lens. All these pictures here of the wedding cake being cut all taken by different people, all different perspectives of how people are using it. If you're, this is uh, at BYU, uh, people are at Rubio's there taking different perspectives. Uh, we've got nine contributors there taking all different shots. And it doesn't just stop there. What you have is the ability to share time and space. And so in this one, this is a holy event at Stanford where people throw lots of color at each other. And now this is a large event. These people? I never met. They were taking the pictures in different parts of the space. Now, what's interesting is that guy in the upper top there, that's Ash. Ash comes by the office later and I say, hey, I know you. I've seen you somewhere before. You were, but you were really colorful. <laughs> you had all this stuff on you. And what I realized all of a sudden is, oh, you're at this event. So now, all of a sudden, here we are. We're exchanging in a different context, a different place. And yet, we have a different notion of familiarity. And so now we have a way to actually have a different level of engagement. And so we're taking the ability to extend the notion of space and time. So here's another great example in Japan. What you see there is a car on fire. And what's really cool about this, taken by three different people, there's a car. Whoops, sorry about that. There's two pictures of the car on the street. And uh, take them from a different perspective. And here's a really cool one, even one from top of a balcony. All the people just happen to be in the same environment, and it just works naturally. And now, how does it that? And that's really what starts to get into the technology, which I'll get into a little bit. Is all of these people were suddenly able to say, "Oh, car fire! I need to power on this app. I want to see what's happening. Can we get all the different perspectives?" Yes. All of a sudden, it just happens. And that technology must facilitate that naturally. And that's one of the things that we're working very hard to do. Here's an event we just did this last Sunday at Water for Elephants. And what happened there was uh, there's a line. People waited in line for about 24 hours to, to get uh, in or access to the uh, red carpet area. And those people were encouraged to download the Color App. And five fans were selected to actually go on the red carpet uh, and use their, uh, use their phones to take pictures. This was a picture that was taken by a fan 
on the red carpet. These, all these images were streamed in real time to, uh, to the web, and so people could follow along from the event from anywhere. So now all of a sudden, people at the back of the line are able to see what's happening throughout the line, as well as what's actually happening on the red carpet. And then you can extend that experience onto the web, into the more traditional paradigms. We did a similar event uh, just two days ago with the Doctor Who event, so very much along the lines of the TARDIS. Here's another great example of a guy who's actually sharing how to, he's creating a story about how to make a sandwich. How do you, what do you do? He's giving directions, instructions. And so you have a new creative way to actually tell stories, to basically microblog. But not only microblog as an individual, you can do it as a community. People can share, they can comment, they can interact. And what really goes into the secret sauce of this? It's about determining proximity. And yes, the GPS works sometimes. Uh, and all of the people here, you know this all too well about the difficulties that are faced with that. Uh, devices are getting more powerful every day. And there's tons of different things that you can actually do with them. And there's more and more sensors. And this is really where the art of data science comes in. The ability to take all of the different feature sets, the ambient light, the way people have interacted before, the, f the, the way your phone is or you have interacted. And the way I usually explain this is this phone these days, when you wake up in the morning, it's right next to your bedside. This phone and my wife's phone, for when we're lucky, we get six hours of sleep uh, and the kids don't wake up too early, it's no more than eight feet from each other. You walk into the shower, it's maybe 15 feet from you. You go out, you maybe go for a run, it's strapped to your arm. This phone basically is there with you all the time. So who do I call the most? Call my wife. Well, she should be naturally in that network with me. The notion of proximity helps us determine what your social network, that network that I talked about at the beginning of what proximity is, that aspect should become natural. And so by using what all the things that we've learned in creating about di big data, data mining, data science, we should now be able to help that device move beyond just the GPS. We should help it become more natural of an extension of yourself to meld both that proximity with that social network. So going forward, really into what happens when you use the app. One of the things that we've seen a lot happen, and you'll see this with a future speaker, that's what happens. People power it on, and they look, and all of a sudden it's there. You're in the right sort of group, and all these pictures are streaming in, and it's like, wow, wait a sec. That's kind of cool. And more and more, you're starting to put that proximity in context. A curious thing happens as you use the app. And it, and really get to understand the stories that people are telling. You move into a space of empathy. You start to ability to take, to walk a mile in each other's shoes. And that's a real image that somebody had taken at a, at a conference event there. At, uh, and I think, the, I'm not sure which event that was. But let me just give you some examples of that. This is Adam uh, Witherspoon, one of uh, the guys in the office. He'd been feeling sick, been having a rough day. He'd been give, showing like all these images of what a rough day it was. And what happens? Somebody says, you know what? You need a bowl of soup. So I bring a bowl of soup in for him. Because they have context. They know where he is. They know what he's been going through. And they know where to get him the bowl of soup at. So you, suddenly you're able to take not only empathy, but turn empathy into action. Here's another great one of, uh, of uh, this is uh, Bill's kid, and showing like, what he's doing and riding his bike. And so when he, when he visits the office, I know what to talk to him about. I ask him, hey, how was it like? How's your bike going? I get to understand and interact in different ways. Uh, people really are able to tell their stories. You know, sometimes you get images like this, and all of a sudden you realize, oh, <laughs> they're getting their teeth whitened. <laughs> and what really it, it happens at the end of the day is it starts with proximity, but doesn't end there. It really takes to take proximity and extend that notion of proximity to taking your social network, familiarity, and melding those together 
to create shared experiences and allow you to tell your story. And that's really where we're going with this, with this product. And uh, love your feedback. Feel free to email me or send, uh, send it directly uh, on Twitter uh, or any other mechanism you like to use. Uh, take a photo and post your comments, uh, write them out. Thank you.